to have a pure conception of Allah, you are declaring tasbih. In the Quran, whenever somebody says something that's blasphemous or something that's shirki, something that associates something with Allah, you know what Allah's response to that is? Subhanahu wa ta'ala, amma yaqulun. Subhanallah, amma yushrikun. Tasbih says no shirk. That's a, that's a contaminated concept of God. No, he's too perfect for that. Tasbih literally is to declare Allah's perfection. Perfection means no imperfections allowed. All imperfections cleansed away. So that's our intellectual purity in our concept of God. That's the tasbih. But then what is hamd? Hamd is praise and gratitude. Two things. A shukru wa thana. Actually the word hamd, before it's used, you know, like abstract, uh, hamd that was used when somebody's belly is full, they're completely satisfied. Like they enjoyed the meal and they are grateful that they got the strength from that meal. They, they, need, they got what they needed. And from it came the idea of two things, praise and thanks. It actually originally has to do with ishba'ah. It has to do with being full. That's where the word hamd actually originally comes from. But anyway, so athana wa shukr, the abstract concepts are praising something and thanking someone. Both of those, by the way, are emotional responses. They're not logical responses. Uh, you know, wh when do you praise something? When you find it beautiful. That's when you praise something. You praise something when you find it amazing. You guys, some of you guys are watching the Astaghfirullah UFC fight and one kick and the guy's dead or the guy's knocked out. And you're like, oh, I need to watch the replay. And you're praising it. You're praising it because it's something remarkable. That's a qualitative assessment. That's not a scientific, rational, you know, black and white assessment. The tasbih is about evidences. The tasbih is about the right concepts. But hamd is about what you feel. You cannot do hamd without feeling it actually, and it's not hamd at all. And the same way, hamd is not just about praise, it's also about thanks. It's about thanking someone. And thanking is something that comes from the heart. It's something that's felt. So actually, when we do the tasbih of Allah, we're cleaning our minds. And we're doing the hamd of Allah, we're cleaning our hearts. It's the heart and the mind. Both of them, covered in both. You know? And there's an, there's an aspect of spirituality in tasbih also. And there's an aspect of the intellectual in hamd also. The opposite is also true. But tasbih is dominated by the intellectual and hamd is dominated by the spiritual. That's, that's actually the, the way that the two are divided. And look at how the angels speak to Allah. They say, وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ We do your tasbih by doing hamd of you. So what do they do? They combine the spiritual and the intellectual together. And that's what the Qur'an is. It's not just an intellectual book. It's not just a spiritual book. It's a combination of both, right? So we're going to see both of those elements in the surah. And of course, then there's mulk. Now, if you look at the previous, I said there's an intellectual component, there's a spiritual component, and there's a practical component. Now, if you look at this ayah, you're going to find there's tasbih of Allah, which I said is what? Intellectual. There's the hamd of Allah, which is? Spiritual and between the two, Allah says, He alone owns all kingdom, authority, dominion. Guess what that takes us to? The practical. Where does he actually have authority over me? When when should I be waking up? When should I be going to sleep? What should I eat? What should I not eat? What kind of relationships can I have? What kind of money can I earn? What kind of money can I spend? Where should I spend? Now there's an authority over me. That's overlooking that. That's the practical side. And the practical is in the middle of two. Which two? The intellectual and the emotional, the spiritual, in between the two. What does that mean? That my practical behavior, my recognition of Allah's sovereignty, Allah's kingdom over me, sometimes it is dominated by the spiritual, sometimes it's dominated by the intellectual. But if I only have one or the other, it's incomplete. My actual adherence to Allah my actual submission to Allah cannot just be purely intellectual and cannot be purely spiritual. In fact, Allah gave us warnings about that. There were nations before us that came, they became overly intellectual. 